I get this question a lot on my various art social media accounts of, uh, Gumi, how do you make art? How do you draw the prettiest of pictures that I've ever seen in the entire world? In fact, I just got one today as of recording this audio of how I draw. And I thought to myself, uh, Gumi, you have a YouTube channel. Why don't I just make a concise and easy to follow tutorial of how I draw the prettiest of pictures. So that is the catalyst of how this video got made and how this idea came into fruition. Uh, I hope you enjoy and yeah, let's get into it. So we already know how this idea came into my mind of how, oh, I need to, I should probably make a video about how I do my art process and how it all works. And the first thing that I do is an idea pops inside of my head. I know there are some people in the world who don't have uh, visualization in their mind, but for me, it is very prevalent when I get an idea. For this one example, when I drew Red Velvet Cookie, um, it was because of his new skin that came out, the cake stylist. Um, and I had a really big envisioned plan in my mind of how this would work and how this would look, but it is always important to just think about it for a bit. And what I do, as you see on the screen now, is I make a quick thumbnail sketch and what a thumbnail sketch is basically it helps you get your ideas out there. It can really help with trying to make your art or do anything creatively. Um, I use sticky notes. I have a bunch of sticky notes all over my setup um, and I used a pen and I just sketched a few out and the final one will be on the screen of what I went for. And I also looked up a few bases. Now I know bases have a sort of negative connotation and that has a lot to do with tracing, but that's not what we're using them for today. We're using them as reference. Um, up on the screen, you will see the references I use, the two pictures I was looking and these two stood out to me of, so they sort of visualized what I was visualizing in my head, but of course they don't look exactly the same, but it just helps to have that. Um, and you can use bases, um, but of course you need to credit, of course, but the, the way we use bases here is more as a reference point. Um, it might be difficult to see where I took inspiration from them, but I had them up as reference on my side screen where I was looking at the entire time when drawing. For this drawing in particular, I definitely wanted it to be more of a dynamic pose, so of course you would need reference. References Reference is key when making anything, but especially art. Art is anything but without references can make it a living nightmare. Reference just makes your life a whole lot easier. Um, I've started to get more and more into it. I start using it for hands. I start using it for face shape. I start using it for everything. And it has really, I can see it in myself and in my old art for um, two to three months ago that it is a significant difference in quality. It's all to help you flesh out your own idea and design into actual words and feelings. Another thumbnailing tip that I know that works for a bunch of other people is, I know I use it on sticky notes, but you can actually use it on your canvas, make a few tiny ones, and then the one you want to go with, you can take that, you can erase the others, and then you can enlarge it on your canvas and see how it feels. And if it works for you, then that's great. And I would highly recommend that. And I've done that before and it's helped as well, but I always kind of like the feeling of traditional because um, I usually do traditional art when I'm waiting on like a video to export or like I'm waiting on a file to come through or I'm waiting on a client or anything like that to sort of um, pass the time. And this idea came relatively easy. Um, of course, with it being a dynamic pose, it was a bit more difficult. Um, and of course, with a sketch, we sort of want to sketch out the general idea of what I want the final drawing to look like. Um, of course, that is what a sketch does, but um, you, can't, you need to make your sketch look clear. Um, if you're having an issue where the sketch is um, a lot more jungled or like jumbled up together, I would highly suggest um, maybe after you've done that initial sketch, um, lower the opacity down on the layer, make a new sketch layer so you can finite, like make it more finite and easy to understand in your own brain. 
Whenever I'm drawing, I am looking at several thousand references on my other monitor or on my phone. Um, you don't get to see it in the speed paint, but just to tell you that there are always references, especially with this part. Um, you can see I'm drawing the shoes and these were Brogue shoes um, and I had to look it up and I had to look up some references like that to help me because you know I don't have that in my visual library and you can only have so many things in there um, but I looked up some pictures of those shoes I also looked up pictures of glasses from like spec savers and such um, and especially the scissors um, I looked up a couple of references of people holding the scissors because I'm not that confident in drawing hands of course I don't think many people are um, and my visual library just isn't as great as hands um, so what I do is that I google search a bunch of hands like pictures of um, for this example, I was looking up pictures of people holding scissors in their hands, holding clothes scissors in their hands, just seeing how I felt about it, and um, I like how it came out. But then I also, for the big, big scissors, I looked up a picture of some antique old scissors opened up just on Google Images. Um, and that really helped too because uh, I get quite confused about how open scissors look. Um, and that really helped. It's tiny stuff like that that elevates a drawing to the next level. That extra bit of detail, that extra bit of care can really be see-through and a lot of people notice it when you put more effort into a drawing. Um, I know a lot of people who comment on my work are like, oh, whenever I put a bit more effort into it rather than a rush drawing, people are like, oh, um, I really like the detail in this or, oh, I noticed how you did this, this and this and I really like that. Um, and that's always a good feeling to have, of course. And of course, it's really important to have a reference of the character or person or whoever you are drawing, whether it be human or animal. It's important to have reference there, to just get a better visual idea. I've also found that when drawing characters, um, specifically for this one, Red Velvet, I looked up pictures of him in his new, like I looked up fan art of the his new skin in Cookie Run and I looked up how other people drew it and that gave me a better idea and I looked up other fan art of um, him as well, not in the skin but just in general for the hair, for the clothes, for his general build. Um, so having references and fan art of the character you're drawing can really help you as well. Uh, a good place to look for references is obviously Google Images if you don't want to um, you know, get a Pinterest account, but Pinterest is very good. I myself currently at this very moment don't have a Pinterest account because uh, it's mainly out of spite because I don't want, because I hate the pop-up that keeps coming up of when you use the site when you're not logged in of, you know, you should really log in and I'm like, I don't think I want to. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend Pinterest because um, you can get a lot of really good references. I know I've gotten a few really good ideas from Pinterest. Um, so of course I have thought about making an account, but obviously I'm a bit too lazy for that. When drawing, I think it's really important, and I'm not, not a lot of people talk about this, um, to have a either reference board or a saved list or whatever. I don't know what it's called on Instagram, but I have one of those of people's art that you want your art to look like, if that makes sense. Not copying, not copying at all, but um, to have it as sort of inspiration of what your art wants to look like. I use it all the time. I especially used it in this one too. I have two separate ones. I have one for line art of what my, my line art wants to look like. Um, and I have one for how I want my sort of shading and painterly style to look like. And they're both different and they're both um, pretty interesting and they're important to have in my opinion. And I don't think, I don't think a lot of people like to talk about it because um, it's sort of taboo to use other people's um, work and stuff in your work, but I find that color picking is important. I think that can be super helpful if you're not too confident in your colors. Um, as long as you're not absolutely ripping off the other person's artwork, it should be completely, completely fine. For my main brushes that I used, I use Clip Studio Paint, but I use the downloaded brushes. 
I just went on their search engine and I just searched uh, liner brushes and color brushes and I saw which ones that I liked. Um, here are the ones I use for inking. Uh, it's The title for this one is Sometimes I Ink But Then I Forget and the content ID is 17732230 and the other one is in Korean, so obviously I can't pronounce it, but the content ID for that one is 17285.10, so 10. And I alternate between the two when doing line art. I think both are good. One is more soft and one is more hard. Um, and I think they work really well together, so that's what I use, and I'll put them up on screen so you can pause and see them there. And the ones that I use for coloring are the rough and color brush and the content ID for that is 17657777 and the other one that I use is the better fill tool and the content ID for that is 19091222 and the other one that I use for shading as well is paint 3 um, and its content ID is 17250337 Seven three. It's seven three. Sorry. Uh, those will all be up on screen. Uh, so if you want to pause at any time and put those in, the content ID you should be able to search it up, and you should be able to find it pretty easily. When drawing, you can see this a lot, but I like using the color layer tool. Um, this is whenever a part of my line art or coloring turns into a sort of bluish hue. Um, that is a thing of Clip Studio that you can use. I don't know if you can use it in other things, but the principle still applies where I use it if I need to um, just fix up some liner or see where the line is going. I usually use it for liner and um, it can really help with cleanup um, and it can help with everything. So I would highly recommend I put it up on the screen of um, where you can find it on Clip Studio. There's two places you can put it. Um, there's one on the upper layer and there's one on top of just the layer folder. For objects, a lot of the time you can see me using the symmetrical ruler in Clip Studio Paint and a lot of other places have this too. The symmetrical ruler is really good for art. Um, it's good for objects. It's good for um, just basic stuff like that. If you need some, if you need something to look the same on both sides, the symmetrical tool will be your best friend. <laughs> Another neat trick to use is the airbrush tool. I think a lot of people underutilize the airbrush tool, but the airbrush tool is really, really good. Um, if you need softer lines, or if you need it to just be very subtle, or if you just want a gradient in the hair. I use that a lot. You can't see it that much in this piece because there's a lot of two-toned hair in it, but I use a darker color for the sort of bottom of the hair, however long it goes, and then for the top I use a lighter color, and then I use a sort of blocky pen uh, to make a highlight, and I sort of, I erase a lot of it to make it seem more dynamic and, um, yeah, those are all the sort of um, tips and tricks that I use when making art. Um, I use these uh, often or uh, as often as I can. Um, so when you see speed paints in the future and you see me sort of like the screen bouncing around and everything, just you'll know more about what's going on. And I hope this was helpful. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed, uh, do give it a like and a subscribe. All of my socials are in the description. I have an Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitter, as well as a TikTok because I'm having a midlife crisis. I hope this tutorial uh, was well, and I hope you have a good day, night, or evening.